Hello, good morning everyone and welcome to today's live stream, Your Clearing Questions Answered. My name's Sorrel, I've recently finished studying Joint Media and Drama here at DMU and I now work as a Social Media Officer on the marketing team. So as you can see, I'm also joined by Dal and Jordan, who I'll let introduce themselves now. So good morning everyone, my name is Dal, so I work in our schools and colleges team. So throughout the year, I would actively go around schools and colleges, providing advice and guidance on the UCAS application. And of course, giving a gu uh, guidance on clearing. So if you guys do have any questions, please do feel free to drop them in the comment section. And as we go through this broadcast, we'll be trying to, to answer those questions as best as we can for you. I'm Jordan. I'm a, an English and creative writing student, and I also work with the ambassador team and I'm currently working with the uh, clearing. Great, thanks both. So firstly, I'd just like to say a huge congratulations to everyone receiving their A-level results today. We know that you all will have been working extremely hard for these results, so I hope you're all very proud of yourselves. Um, no matter the outcome, DMU Clearing is here for you to give you the right options to get into university. So if you'd like to talk to somebody today or any time this week, our clearing lines are open. You can call us or send us a WhatsApp message and the details of those are running along the bottom of the screen now. Uh, in today's live stream, we're going to be providing you with all of the information you need to know about clearing and answering some of your questions on student life in Leicester. We will also be taking you, ta oh, sorry, taking your questions to make, uh, to make, so make sure to send them in during the live stream and we will put them up for you. Uh, I'm now going to hand over to Dal to talk all things clearing. Excellent. So obviously today is UCAS is results day. So all of you guys now should be in the process of having a look at what um, results you got. With it being teacher assessed grades, hopefully it's not too much of a surprise to you guys. So you should have had an indication of what um, sort of grades that you guys were going to. Um, but clearing is an opportunity really for a lot of um, students who are currently um, going through this process in terms of getting their, their results. So please, if you do not think that you've had the right opportunities in terms of, right, this is the university that I want to go to, clearing is there for you guys. If you've never made an, an UCAS application at all, uh, you can also use clearing to get yourself a offer on a course that you want. So if you go onto DMU's website, for example, you can have a look at all the different clearing courses that we have on offer. So have a look at the grades that you guys have got and then also match that up to the entry criteria to what we're after. So from there, it can give you a good indication as to whether you're eligible for that course. Before making the phone call though i would also strongly advise you guys to do a bit of research around the course itself so have a look at what the course entails have a look at the different types of modules have a look at the assessment criteria. does it suit the way that you guys prefer to study in so that's very very important to you guys so even though you're making a decision and you're going to be having a phone call that is going to really dictate the next three years of your life you still can do a bit of research around the course itself to ensure that right this is definitely the course that i want to go to you could be in a position right now where you've received your course offers from your your choices or your firm and your insurance choice and you're thinking you know what i visited dmu's campus not too long ago i really liked it and i want to get an offer from that university so you can always get in touch even if you have an offer already and it's really important for you guys to know and really understand that you guys get the opportunity to hold as many different offers as you want so it's not something that you only get to choose one course and one offer if you wanted to you can get multiple offers and then you, you get a, roughly around 24 hours to debate on those and deliberate with family members and right trying to work out what's the best thing for you and then from there, you can go into your UCash track, update your UCash track, and then you can accept one clearing offer. Thank you. So why might someone apply through clearing? Um, there's multiple reasons, really. So I touched upon some of them before. So you could be a student who suddenly realised, right, when I made my application, we're going back now 
to, to roughly around September to December time when you guys would have been making your UCAS application. One area of the academic discipline could be of particular interest for you. But as you've gone through your A-levels or after you've gone through your BTECs, you've studied different types of modules that you've suddenly realised, you know what, I actually prefer to study something different. But because you've already submitted your UCAS application, you're probably thinking, right, it's too late. But clearing gives you that opportunity to make those types of changes. So if you're sitting there right now and you're in a position and you're thinking, you know what, this isn't quite what I want to study. Please do pick up the phone. You can see the number on the bottom of the screen. You can see the WhatsApp message if you prefer to message. And please do get in touch. Don't just sit there and think, right, it's too late now. I can't make any decisions. You also might be a student who hasn't done as well as what they expected. So in your mind, you had these grades that you was predicted, your offers were based on those grades, and maybe you've just fallen a little shy of that requirement. Again, you, um, DMU Clearing is there for you guys for to get in touch and have a look at the different courses that we have on offer and also try and hopefully gain yourself a place um, on that specific course. And the final type of student really that can utilize clearing is someone who hasn't applied through UCAS at all. So if you are that type of student and during the normal cycle where your school colleagues were filling out or your college colleagues was filling out their UCAS applications form, you was like, you know what, I don't really want to go to university. I want to hold off to see what's happening within the world. And now you've decided, you know what, it sounds like a very, very good idea to go. You can also get your offer, even if you haven't made a UCAS application. So don't panic. So it's not something that you needed to have done prior to, um, to, to phoning up and getting an offer. So you can get your offer um, from us. And then we will send you out instructions on what you need to do in regards to UCAS in order to accept that offer. So it's very, very important that you guys understand that you will need to create a UCAS application even if you haven't prior to receiving your um, offers. Thank you. So what courses are available for people to apply to free clearing? Oh, there's quite a few, to be fair. So there is that it would be, I know we're here till around 10 o'clock this morning. I can probably take up all that time talking <laughs> about all the different courses that we have on offer. So the list is absolutely wonderful. So what we'll try and do, if it's not been done so already, we'll post a link to our clearing courses in the comment section. So then it's for you guys there to have a look at those different types of courses. But sometimes it can be a little bit overwhelming. I think when I think back to my transition from A level to university, it was a little bit difficult because I was just used to studying these set A levels. And then once I started to having a look at the different types of courses that were available at degree level, the choice then became overwhelming. I felt like a kid in a sweet shop because I just didn't really realize, right, which course do I want to go for? That's why it's vitally important that you guys do spend some time. Although it is a quick and very proactive and reactive day in terms of you do have to be making these choices and decisions quite quickly. Also do take some time, have a look at the catalogue that we um, will publish for you guys and that's already live on our website. Have a look at all the different courses. Um, and then if you do have any questions, you can utilise this live stream. You can get in touch with us on WhatsApp and hopefully we'll be able to answer the questions that you might have about the courses that we have on offer. So I know you've already mentioned it briefly, but could you talk a bit about exactly what will happen when someone applies through clearing? Yeah, sure. So the, the typical scenario is, is that you will either get in touch by the phone, so you'll give us a call, um, you'll be greeted by one of our colleagues at DMU, We'll have a very brief conversation with you guys. So we will take some information like your UCAS ID number if you have it. So it's always good to have that to hand. If you don't have it, please do not panic. We'll also ask you all, obviously, your personal details, your name, uh, your contact number, just in case the call uh, drops out. And we'll also ask you what qualifications you've got. Now, it's very, very important you tell us the exact title of your qualification and the grades that you guys have received. The reason as to why that is important is because we have to then 
um, cross reference that with the criteria of the course that you guys are applying for. What we would do there behind the scenes is work our magic. So we'll type all your information onto our systems and then hopefully we will produce an offer for you, either a verbal conditional offer if you're applying for certain courses or a verbal offer. So the difference between the two courses is that some of the courses may have some conditions attached. So you may need to conduct an interview online, for example, or you may need to send us a self-declaration form, which is basically another version of a, of a DBS. So those conditions will be stated within your verbal offer or your verbal conditional offer. For a verbal offer, it is just that. So you have given uh, been given your offer for that course. And usually we'd say you have around 24 hours to accept that. And details on how to accept that will be contained in the offer letter that we send you via email. So all the correspondence that you'll get from us as a university will come to you via email and all the instructions and the actions that you guys need to complete will be listed within that email. So it's vitally important that you're constantly checking your emails once you receive an offer from us, because if you need to sort anything like accommodation out, that will all be communicated through email to you guys. So if you didn't see it in your inbox, please do have a look at your junk um, mailbox because it may have crept in there. Once you've accepted your offer on UCAS track, you would then be contacted by us in terms of trying to arrange your welcome week, in terms of trying to arrange your enrollment. Great. So why might someone not be able to get a clearing offer through DMU? Ooh, some very, very good um, questions. So you might not be able to get a clearing offer if you're already holding an offer elsewhere. Okay, so you can get an offer in terms of, right, we can give you a verbal offer, a verbal conditional offer, but you won't be able to accept it on UCAS track if you're still listed as a firm or insurance at a different institution. So say, for example, you didn't get into your firm choice, so you've automatically been dropped down to your insurance choice, but you think, you know what, I don't really want to go to that insurance choice anymore. I want to make myself um, firm at a different university or get an offer at a different university. You must release yourself from the place that you currently hold on UCAS track. Now, to release, that is done with your university directly. So whoever's issued you that offer, you must get in touch with that university in order to release you from their offer in order for you guys to accept um, an offer, hopefully, from, from DMU. So what I would say before you do release is make sure you get your verbal offer or your verbal conditional offer first please do not release yourself from your place without securing that verbal offer. The reason why we give you this 24 hour grace period is so you can do stuff like release yourself from a different institution if you need to. Um, apart from that, I don't see any other obvious reason as to why you wouldn't be able to get a clearing offer through DMU as long as you have received your results, which everyone should have um, approximately at half past eight this morning. So Hopefully, we're all system go on that front. Definitely. So, once someone has got an offer for clearing at DMU, what would the process then be for booking their accommodation? Um, so, what happens with the accommodation is that at the moment, we're currently working on guaranteed accommodation. So, anyone who calls up to get an offer from DMU. Um, their accommodation will be guaranteed. And the details on how to book that accommodation will be listed in the email that we send over to you lot. So please do keep an eye on that email. You can also have a look on our website as well. So say, for example, if you're not quite sure about the different types of accommodation that we have, and you wanted to do a virtual tour, or if you wanted to have a look at some pictures online, you're more than welcome to have a look at our accommodation um, website, which again, we can post in the chat for you uh, for you lot to have a look at um, in order for you guys to make that decision. So for uh, what you also can do if you wanted to, so our campus is also open to the public now. So 
we're also accepting campus tours so if anyone who wants to to drop in and have a look at the campus if you have any questions about the courses please do feel free to drop in onto campus we can show you around the campus so hopefully it will help you visualize the the environment that you guys could potentially be studying in if you haven't managed to come and see our campus yet so that's also something that we're really happy to to put on for you guys that is something that's going to be happening across the course of the the week so please do feel free to to drop down onto the campus if you can make some time great thank you um so is there anything else that you would like to cover before we answer some questions from our audience um i would just say don't be shy so i know from working pre uh, previous clearings um sometimes some students might feel a bit hesitant or a bit reluctant to get in touch some students might be feeling right i don't want to ask this question because i might sound silly but this is something that's completely new to everyone so it's not something that you lot would have gone through previously during your academic career so it's vitally important for for any students who are out there that are currently listening if you do have any questions around clearing if you do have any questions around your offers or receiving an offer or how to accept the offer it's vitally important that you do so and also have a look at your current offers make sure you're fundamentally happy with the choices that you lot have made in terms of right this is the university that i'm going to be going to this is the course that i'm going to study make sure you're happy with that if there's anything that you're not happy with now's your time to make a chance uh, make a difference sorry so you can get in touch with us we'll be able to have that conversation with you uh, with you lot and then you're able then to to hopefully choose a course which is aligned to your interests of what you want to study academically great thank you um so we're going to go over to our questions now from the audience and do feel free to keep sending them in um, so our first question is how long it will take to get an offer after a credibility interview? So let's have a look at that. So can you please let me know how many days it take for result post the credibility interview? Okay, so with some of the, the interviews that we, we have, so if you are, I believe if you're applying for pharmacy, um, for example, you will do your interview over the phone whilst you're on the call. So please do be prepared if your course does have an, an, an interview attached to it. But as a general rule of thumb, we don't really like to advertise de um, set days or set um, target days in terms of when we will get a result out to you. But the, the terminology and the time frame that we want to go with is that hopefully you'll get your outcome within days of completing the interview as opposed to weeks or months. So you should know very soonish, but unfortunately I'm not able to give you an exact date or time as to, as to when you will get the result of that. Great, thank you. Um, we're just going to see if we have any other questions to answer for you. Uh, yes, so is MOI accepted for a master's course? Interesting. Um, oh. Okay, so I don't want to give out any incorrect information on this live stream. Would it be possible, um, Xiaomim, if I've said your name correctly, apologies if I've said it incorrectly, would you be able just to let us know what that MOI is in the comments and then we can have a look at that for you? and hopefully get you an answer for you on this live stream. Unless Jordan or Sorrel, you know the, the answer to this question or what MOI stands for. Um, no, I'm, I'm afraid I don't. Yeah, I think if you put it in the chat, that would be really helpful and then we can get back to your question. Um, so we have a question about Leicester. So uh, feel free either of you to answer. What is Leicester like? I don't know if you've noticed from the accent, but I'm actually a Brummy. So I think either Jordan or yourself, you'd probably be better suited to, to answer this question. Yeah, Jordan, go for it. Yeah, so Leicester's this really nice, like, student-oriented city. So 
DMU's super close to the centre. I don't know if any of you have seen Sorrel's um, advert that went out recently about the lanes, but that's like the main um, attraction uh, for the city centre is all these like winding little streets with independent businesses. And then if high street business is more your thing, you can hit um, the high street itself. Uh, I've got things like HMV, Primark, uh, H&M. We've got uh, two shopping centres. We've got High Cross and we've got Haymarket. Got loads of places to eat, both in the centre and on Narborough Road, which I think is the most diverse road, at least in the UK, um, mm -hmm. in terms of uh, where the international businesses are on that road. We've got like Polish, Czech, um, African, Caribbean, all kinds of places to eat. Turkish, I'm living next to a Turkish place next year. So it's a really diverse city that's just going to keep you entertained throughout your whole year at uh, DMU and then like beyond that as well. Definitely. I always say it's a nice mix of, it feels like a nice tick, like a nice well-knit community, but also you've got lots of options for shops and cafes and things. It's a good mix. Um, the one, sorry, sorry, can I just jump in on that? The yeah. one thing that I would say about Leicester from my short time of being in there is how close everything is so if you look at where the university is situated if you look at where all the different types of facilities are there is literally no need for you guys to bring a car so if you're in a position where you're thinking right do i drive to university or should i catch public transport it's probably a lot easier for you lot to just catch public transport or arrange on public transport because of how close everything is so the shopping center as jordan was mentioning the different types of restaurants the things to do if you're quite sporty we have leicester football club who beat man city on the weekend to win another trophy we also have the leicester tigers so it's something that is we're well refined in in terms of sport so if you are interested in sport there's a lot of things for you got uh, for you lot to get involved with and also the city and the campus and the way it's situated is that everything is within that walking distance so if you do um, need to move about, it's quite easy to, to navigate. Sorry, Sora. <laughs> no, not at all. Thank you. Um, so another question. Is it too late to reply to DMU? No. So if you're currently thinking about starting this September, so this is the whole purpose of clearing. So don't think that you have to wait an extra year because you, you missed the initial deadline of filling in your UCAS application. So if you are thinking about going to university, please do. You see the numbers at the bottom of the screen, the WhatsApp number, please do get in touch. And hopefully we're able to, to offer you a verbal conditional offer or a verbal offer for a course of your choice. Great, thank you. Um, we've also got another question about the facilities that are available on DMU campus. Jordan, do you want to have a go at this one? Happily. Um, so DMU's got quite a lot of facilities. So each um, each faculty has its own kind of dedicated building. And then you're probably looking at uh, one or two extra buildings as well, depending on how big that faculty is. So we have Hawthorne for HLS, for instance, which is Health and Life Sciences, and they have Portland as well, with Portland being more um, theoretical oriented and then um, Hawthorne just being filled with practical work. Uh, we also have um, our DMU gym, which has got a gymnasium in it. It's got uh, the gym itself. It's got pool. It's got climbing wall. Um, I mean, on the campus itself, so we've got the library and the students' union. So you're well equipped for places to study and places to hang out. Uh, in terms of like food and things like that, we have Subway. We have um, way too many Starbucks on campus. We've got, um, as well as that, we've got uh, the stationery shop, which you can buy stuff from um, with your DMU hoodies and things like that. So the campus is, the campus itself is um, full of facilities and then, Obviously, if you want to go out to Leicester a little bit further, for instance, I'm in the Kayak Society, so we go out onto the River Saw pretty regularly. Um, so DMU also and societies also take advantage of what's around in Leicester too. Mm. I would just say to that, 
We also have a Bloomberg trading room. So if you're interested in studying in business, so we do have those types of facilities there. We've invested very heavily into our VJ Patel building. So if you're interested in studying in the art and design realm, we have absolutely outstanding facilities for that as well. And again, if you haven't been able to, to come and visit our campus, if you haven't got time to get down to us this week, you can always have a look at our virtual tour as well. So you can have a look at the different types of facilities that we have online. So it's a lot easier for you lot to have a look at the facilities as opposed to us to tr trying to describe it because it would then give you guys that, that visual aid as well. Great, thanks so much. So thank you all so far for sending in some questions. Um, do keep them coming in. Um, so I think we're going to go to Jordan now to talk a bit about student life in Leicester. Um, Jordan, I wonder if you could just start off by telling us again what you study and why you chose to study it here at DMU. Yeah, right. So um, I study um, English and creative writing. So I initially actually studied law. Um, and then I, I did a year of that and I thought it's an right course, but it's not really for me. So I did an internal transfer. I changed over. Um, and I've just completed my first year in English and creative writing, and it's been much more up my street, I find. Great. Um, oh, sorry, do you continue? I was just going to say, I, I basically went for that because it was much more like the creative route. I tried doing the um, like the legal route, and I figured I just wanted to be a bit more, uh, a bit more creative. So it was good that DMU kind of gave me the flexibility to um, change over after the year. Yeah. I think that's a lot more common than people think, actually, and it is completely fine to do that, to come to university and think, oh, actually, there's this other course that you do, and maybe I'd actually like to do that. They are very accommodating for people to, to change their mind a bit in the beginning. Um, so what do you like most about the course that you're studying? There's a really good engagement when you're in lectures between uh, the lecturer and the students. So whenever we're asked a question, it will always, nearly always be a debate between like three students and then a lecturer as well, just kind of guiding it. So it's, you're never being told what your opinion should be. You're always being asked about it. And then that's always being challenged and you kind of, your opinion then develops as a result, uh, as well as the, with the information that you're being given um, from the lecture itself. Thank you. So what kind of support have you had from your academics, be that online or in person? So when you start DMU, you'll be given a personal tutor. Um, these guys are your port of call. So you can kind of go straight to them uh, with any issues you have, whether it be uh, managing your study time, whether you've got a job and you're thinking, how am I going to, am I maybe not be able to attend a lecture? They'll be able to kind of help you work around that. Um, they will also be free to uh, email at any point and they'll respond within their office hours. They're really just happy to kind of answer any questions you have or give you a hand with anything. Do you want to look up? Oh, if you're worried about an assignment, for instance, and you want to know what uh, the marking criteria is, they can give you little hints about that. Uh, occasionally, they might be able to show you what the criteria is just outright. So you can really kind of use them as a resource to a talk to and b get ahead academically as well with covering any shortcomings that you might be developing over the year because you know people get busy some subjects are harder than others uh it's totally fine to drop them an email and ask for a little bit of extra help definitely it's one of my favorite things about my course at least is that the lecturers were just always more than helpful to just have a meeting you know even if it wasn't in the schedule if you need help they're always there so have you been on any DMU global trips during your time at DMU so far? I haven't, but I've heard plenty about them. Um, I've heard that DMU global go abroad um, on like charity trips. So I've, I've heard that we go abroad and I'm, will be signing up to go abroad to places like India um, to go and help build facilities there uh, with schools. Um, I've heard that we go to places like Sri Lanka uh, and then there's also the other side of it, where if you want to go and study abroad uh, with a university, you can also do that. So you go abroad for a year to, say, Paris if you're a fashion student. Um, I'm, I've heard that America is also a place, China. 
Um, so you can go and get a taste of. Oh, seems like we've lost Jordan for a minute there. But whilst we have, oh, I think you're back. Sorry, do continue. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, just you can basically go abroad for a year to study and make some friends that way or you can engage in the culture in another way by getting your hands dirty and um, getting involved with some um, charitable work as well through the university. Yeah, it is a really impressive DMU initiative. In my first year, we went to Copenhagen um, with the drama department and that has to be, there's so many highlights of DMU, but the DMU global trip to Copenhagen was amazing. I think we were there for four nights um we were just taken to all the theatres in the area but we went to uh Tivoli Gardens um yeah obviously usually DMU is very keen to take people on DMU global trips so I do recommend um what other activities have you been involved in then have you been in any societies yeah any like I mentioned earlier I've been in um kayak society so I'm actually on the committee for that and health and safety um which is a nightmare when people don't tell the whole truth about being able to swim. But um, So we go out um, onto the River Saw, we hop in our kayaks, we um, go out off river, we come back, we have socials. Uh, socials are this really fun thing where basically uh, when you're in a society, um, I think it's Wednesday nights, um, the same time that the Injunction Club is open at DMU campus, um, basically the entire society will go out typically do a bit of bar hopping in Leicester there's normally a theme so I've seen um, guys dress as cheerleaders and girls dress as like big burly uh, football players I've seen like farmers and sheep that kind of thing so no one takes it seriously it's a lot of fun um, and it's a good way to sort of like you know engage in, in two parts of it you can kind of you go out and you do what your interest is and then you hit a social and you can just kind of let loose after a hard day's study um, as well as that, I was part of the Creative Writing Society uh, last year, which is how I kind of dipped my toe in before I uh, joined the course proper. Um, yeah, and as well as that, I mean, there's lots of like informal things you can do as well, like just hanging about on the campus. Um, there's also like seminars in the library if you want to develop a little bit of personal skills, things like that. Yeah, definitely lots to get involved in. It sounds like you've been getting involved in a lot as well, so that's great. Probably, um, yeah. <laughs> So I know we've already spoke a bit about some of the things that there are available in Leicester, but maybe what's your favourite thing to do in Leicester, maybe on a weekend or something? Ooh, I really like going out, um, going out on these um, these long walks. So there's by DMU, there's a uh, canal. It's called the Grand Union Canal. And you can go in either direction on that canal. And if you walk for about 40 minutes, you'll find something interesting. So walking in one direction, will take you all the way to Elstone Meadows, which is this massive um, fielded area with like loads of woodland and um, stone seating and places people walk like dogs. There. There's almost a wildlife reserve kind of going on. Um, people often bring out like drinks and have barbecues there. If you walk the other way, you've got um, sort of where the, uh, where the canals like convene we've got the weir uh we've got like a large park area as well as the remains of leicester's old railway station so like I, I like going out on the long walks and kind of seeing like kind of buried history of leicester i guess like the stuff that isn't in a museum it's just leicester has a lot of stuff that's just kind of out and about that you can kind of just find lying around yeah definitely I think that's a bit of a hidden treat of Leicester, actually, the, especially Elstone Meadows. I know me and my uh, housemate would go up there almost every morning at one point just to go for runs. It's a very nice, friendly area. Like you say, everyone's just walking their dogs. and Yeah, it's really pretty. Uh, do you have any tips for people when it comes to starting university and making some new friends? Um, yeah, I would say get involved in freshers um, as a start. Just don't be afraid to kind of go out. I mean, you don't have to drink. It's not your thing. You could just sit there with a pint of Coke. No one's going to judge you for it. Um, we also have a Facebook group um, applying to DMU 2021, I think. Loads of people in there just throwing in um, posts about, oh, is any, who's on my course? Is anyone in my accommodation? Um, so that's a really good way to kind of get in group chats early, uh, as well as especially for things like your course. 
Um, I mean, you want to more on fresh is like you want to go to as many events as you can that you're able to go to. Don't wear yourself out, but also you'll have you'll have a while to recover. Um, look at societies on um, the DSU. So I I've seen the list of societies. There will be one that takes your fancy, I'm sure. Um, it, it goes on for ages. Uh, join those. Get talking to the committee. Get in the group chats. Talk to other people. Go to a couple of society meets. The main places where you're going to learn, uh, where you're going to meet people, is going to be your lectures, freshers, your accommodation, and societies. And they're going to be kind of your uh, your four or five large major circles. Yeah, definitely. Um. Thank you. So before we go to uh, the questions again from our audience members, um, maybe you could finish off by just giving your advice or your top tips to people who are planning to come to DMU or maybe just thinking about coming to DMU at the moment. Um, I would say if you're going to come to DMU, uh, first of all, don't panic. It's a lovely campus for a lot of people. Um, I would make a list of everything you want to bring because there's nothing more annoying than getting here, moving in, and then realizing that you've left half your stuff at home. Um, make sure to, when you get here, explore the city a little bit. Um, it's it's quite tempting to kind of just like stay in your room and be like, oh my God, it's a new city and it's a bit overwhelming. But um, if you actually go out and explore a bit, just intend on getting lost uh, more or less and then kind of like finding your way back because uh, there is a lot to see and you'll have a kind of grace period before you start where you can kind of you are free to uh to roam about a little bit not quite constrained by lectures at the moment you have probably about a week or two to just uh enjoy yourself and yeah make sure you study <laughs> but also just make sure to enjoy yourself too because it's uh probably the most fun experience that you're going to have as an adult <laughs> Yeah, no, definitely, definitely make the most of it. Um, so thank you, Jordan. Uh, just a reminder for anyone that's joined us recently, uh, the clearing contact details are going along the bottom of the screen. You can call us or you can WhatsApp us today. Um, so we are now going to go to questions again. So do send them in if you have any. Uh, the first question is about classes and whether they will be in person this September. Um, I feel like this is the million dollar question at the moment. So I know a lot of students are currently thinking around, right, do I go to university will probably hinge on this, uh, this answer. And the good news is from us from DMU is that we really want to let you know that we're doing the most that we can to ensure that your student experience is not hindered. So we're pleased to let you know that our plans for teaching and learning for 2021, 2022 have been created to be future proof. So avoiding disruption to your studies, even if a national COVID-19 restrictions return, or if you are pinged and you have to self isolate. So here at DMU, we are focused on ensuring that you receive a consistent high quality student experience and our timetables and event planning have all been designed to really maximize face-to-face -face activities where possible. So retaining your on-campus experience and hopefully not disrupting your schedule whilst you're studying here with us. So what we will do as well, um, if it's not been done so already, we will post the link to our response to online slash face-to-face -face, uh, lectures in the comment section for you guys to have a bit of a read of. Great, thank you. Um, can someone's parents call for them on the day? Yes and no is the answer to that question. I know it sounds a bit funny when I say yes and no. Yes, they can if they are a nominated person. So when you as a student completed your UCAS application, you would have had the opportunity to put down a nominated person. So a nominated person is one that can speak on your behalf and they can phone up and handle your clearing questions or your clearing application. If you did not specify a nominated person, then it's only you, the student, who can phone up and talk about your clearing application 
or any clearing questions that you may have. Great, thank you. Um, someone has asked about the type of questions that they might be asked in a credibility interview. I don't know whether, Dal, you might have the answer to that. Ooh, I'm not too familiar, if I'm being completely honest, in terms of credibility interviews. What I would say is if you bear with us, um, we can make some questions on our side. Um, well, I'll make some questions on my side and hopefully I'll get an answer to you as soon as I can. So please do bear with me on that one. Thank you. Um, how long will it take for someone to get a place confirmed at DMU? So what happens is, and I was mentioned this earlier, so if you missed the start of our, of our live stream, I'll just cover it again. So if you have just joined us, when you as a student make a clearing um, call to us, we will give you a verbal offer or we'll give you a verbal conditional offer should you meet the requirements that we're asking for for that particular course. You will then have 24 hours to go into UCash Track to accept the offer. Once you have accepted the offer, our wonderful magicians in our admissions team will do their magic and they will accept your offer on our end. And again, I really want to avoid from giving timeframes out because the last thing that I want to hear in next week is that Dow said on that live stream, they'll get it done within three days or four days because we cannot really give that sort of time frame out. But just to give you a general rule or a general form of guidance is what we try to work to. We try and get that done as soon as possible. So please do be patient. So if you have completed the actions that we've given you on your offer letter, then please do be rest assured we will get to that on our side as soon as we possibly can because we cannot wait for you guys to join us in September. Thank you. Um, so someone has also asked if people can still get accommodation. I know we yeah. earlier, but just bearing in mind someone might join late. Yeah, yeah no, no, sure, it's fine. Um, so at the moment with all of the offers that we're making, so our verbal offers, our verbal conditional offers, we are guaranteeing accommodation now places for our accommodation are naturally limited so we cannot guarantee accommodation for for all of our students so that is being run on a first come first serve basis so if you are a student who's currently thinking about moving away and you need to sort out your accommodation my advice to you guys would probably be try and pick up the phone as soon as you possibly can so we can ensure to get you guaranteed accommodation on our campus and again if you scroll up through the the comments on this broadcast you'll be able to find more details of our accommodation and you're able to have a look at our different types of accommodation on the accommodation web page if you are local or in close proximity to leicester please do feel free to drop down to our campus our campus is open today uh, you will be able to have a walk around our campus and you'll also be able to ask any questions that you have so i'm told that the campus center is the report hub for that so if you are dropping by please do um, come down to campus ask your questions and i'm also being told you may be able to get a offer on campus as well so there's another way for you guys if you are interested in getting an offer on one of our clearing courses today plenty of reasons to visit um, so does someone have to live in university accommodation? Um, Jordan, do you want to have a, a go at this one? Happily, yeah. Um, no, you don't have to live in university accommodation. So um, university accommodation is the most regulated um, if you are living away from your parents. So they're typically the ones that are up to the standard that the uni would want uh, for the students. But you can go private. Uh, you can go for houses. Um, Sulets are a good one uh, to go for if you're looking to get a house to rent. Um, there's not just the university owned accommodation either. There is um, private sectors like Code, like Sulets, like um, Liberty Living. So um, you have a lot of choice. You don't just have to go for the ones that are owned by uh, the university. You don't have to go for ones that are even typically regarded as student halls. Uh, you can go for plenty of different things. You could, in fact, um, if you live in, say, Birmingham or 
London, you could stay at home if you wanted to and just uh, get the training if that's what you're more comfortable with, if it's convenient. What um, I would you say, have... Mr. Oh, sorry. Sorry, George. Uh, go for it. Um, what I would say in response to that question as well is that do stuff that suit your personal needs. So for me, when I went to university, I didn't stay in uni accommodation. I actually stayed with my friends. So the first year I stayed at home. So I didn't live close to my university. So I was commuting, as Jordan was saying. So if you live in Birmingham, you wanted to commute in, that's completely fine. But then sometimes when I was a bit tired and I couldn't be bothered to drive back home, I would just crash at a mate's house. Um, so I feel like each experience or each choice that you guys do will give you that different type of um experience so it's not always as clean as right i'm not going to move out so that means throughout my whole three years i'm never going to stay in accommodation so you can always make friends you can always decide that in years two and years three you know what actually i want to have a sample of what it's like to live in accommodation so you can either go for that university accommodation or if you wanted to so what i did in my third year was I just rented a house with some of my mates from university. And that really did add to my overall student experience. So it's not just university accommodation. There are many different ways you can go about it. So sorry for stepping on your toes there, Jordan. Perfectly fine. All valid points, yeah. Adding, like, living with your mates is going to improve the experience um, a lot. I think, because um, you're constantly going to be around people you like. I think that was the biggest thing for, for me, was about that in terms of people who are like, because the thought of me going into and living in a space with people that I don't know or probably wouldn't get along with, I don't know, I'm not really a, a naturally extroverted person who likes to, to social. So I, I like to keep my social bubbles a bit tight. So for me, when I could have that control in terms of, right, who I stay with, that was something that I really, really did enjoy when when I did decide to, to move out for that year. Definitely, all down to personal preference, I suppose. Some people like to go into that sort of shared kitchen environment and that way, you know, make some friends and potentially move in with them in the next year. Or yeah, like you say, there's lots of different options. Um, so if someone moves into accommodation and then they change their mind, uh, can they change their accommodation that they're living in? What was that? Sorry, Sarah. My internet no broke up. <laughs> no worries. So if someone moves into accommodation and they change their mind, can they move out and move into a different accommodation option? Um, it would depend on the agreement that you guys sign. So one thing that I would say is that we're trying to be as flexible as possible, but you also have need to have a look at the type of um agreement that you would have signed in order to guarantee your accommodation so does it have a duration where you have to stay is there a minimum duration that you need to do do you need to provide cancellation notices so although we really try and be as flexible as possible we also need to be having a look at the documentation that we've also signed as well so this is a very case by case thing. So I wouldn't want to give a generic answer and say, yeah, it's absolutely fine. One thing I would say is if, if you find that your accommodation is not suitable for whatever reason, please do get in touch with us and we'll try our utmost to, to accommodate whatever your needs are. Great, thank you. Um, so Jordan, this might be one for you to answer perhaps, um, but feel free for you to jump in. Um, should someone insure their belongings whilst at university? Um, if it's valuable, if it's like a phone, if it's a bike, um, if there's a risk of you losing it, I, I would recommend insuring it because, you know, you're in a different city, especially in like student accommodation and things like that, where things are a little bit more communal. A lot of places have like shared bike sheds and things. So I would say on the balance of um, it's not a huge risk that something's going to happen to your belongings but if you want to protect it in that inevitable in that inevitability in that risk um i would go for it um and then if you live in a house as well um then i think it's very important to kind of ensure the belongings that are within the house things like bikes computers things like that because if it's not named on the insurance then if, if you know something goes wrong um you know, we're, we're moving into university, we're adults, things do go wrong. Um, 
if something goes wrong, then you won't be covered for the items that you don't mention. So have a balance of it. If you feel like if it's going to be in your union room all the time and, you know, no one's going to see it, then maybe maybe you don't have to. Maybe the risk is um, quite quite low. But if it's, you know, a bike that's like a thousand pound bike in a bike shed, maybe insure it um, just in case. Yeah, good advice. I think it's just down to, yeah, again, personal preference, really. But yeah, if it's good for your peace of mind, then I would definitely recommend it. Um, again, a question for either of you, so feel free to jump in. Um, what the diversity is like on campus? Go on, Jordan. Um, campus is uh, super, super diverse. Um, we talk If we talk just about the buildings for like a moment, uh, we have Portland Building, which has its own dedicated um, area called the Breathing Space, uh, which is a dedicated room for uh, self ref uh, self reflection, for prayer. Because we have a lot of students who, throughout the day, may need to go um, and pray. They may need to go and self reflect. So uh, we have a dedicated space for that. Um, on a society front, we have. A ton of different societies that are based on things like nationality, lineage, religion. Um, there's uh, the Muslim society. We've got uh, the Caribbean society. Uh, there's just there's loads of societies that are kind of based around those things where people who are kind of of the same uh, disposition kind of all just get together and just have a good time uh, purely on the basis of that. Um, and then just in your lectures as well, you're going to be sitting with people who are, you know, white, black, Middle Eastern. There's just you're never going to be um, it's just I don't even know what the right word is, <laughs> but it's always going to be diverse in in your lectures just because um, of the way Leicester is, because of what DMU is offering um, international students coming in as well. Uh, it's just a very very diverse university from a student's perspective definitely i think it's a nice thing about going to university as well so it, that's quite important really all about meeting new people and sort of broadening your horizons in many different ways um so we have also got a question about uh whether someone should bring a car with them to university i personally don't drive so this wasn't something that i needed to consider but i wonder whether either of you might have some advice on that do you drive Jordan or? Uh, I don't. <laughs> okay, cool. So when I went to university, I did drive, um, but I went to a more campus space, so it's more remote. So it was okay in terms of parking. Given the, the situation of, of Leicester and the way Leicester is, with it being literally in the heart of the city, I would possibly say no. You can bring your car with you. I'm not saying, no, you can't, and that's a university policy. But what I'm saying is that it's probably a lot easier for you students not to bring a car, um, especially if you're going to be staying on campus. I mean, if you are commuting in, so if you are coming in for maybe a couple of times a week, then, yeah, it's probably beneficial. But with it being a city like most cities in the UK, parking is really scarce. Um, so... It is something that is a bit of a, a rare find. So it's up to you guys. My biggest point to you guys would be, one, do you have the patience to find parking spaces? And and two, are you, you, do you really not want to travel on public transport if you are commuting in? If you are staying at the university, with everything being in walking distance, with, with the university being so connected to a lot of the facilities within the city, I genuinely personally do not believe there's much of a reason to bring a car um, with everything being in walking distance. I don't know if you guys would both, having studied here, both would agree with that. Yeah, definitely. I think the city centre is literally right on your doorstep when you're at DMU campus. So I don't drive, but I also never felt a need to drive whilst I was in Leicester. So that's probably a big reason why. I think everything's so close together that a car would almost add time to the journey or just add effort. <laughs> Because if I want to go to to like High Cross, if I walk, it'll take me about five, ten minutes. Mm. If I have to get in a car, drive to High Cross through the absolute web of roads that is Leicester, 
and then I have to find parking in High Cross. That's probably going to take me about 15 minutes or 20 minutes if, you know, it's quite congested on the road. So it's actually more or less quicker to just walk in. Definitely. Um, so that probably brings us to the end of our questions. Dal, I wonder if you might want to do uh, another reminder about the new clearing, just for anyone that's joined late before we... Before we yeah, end. sure. No problem at all. So one thing I do want to say is that we do have some questions that are outstanding that we haven't answered. So I know myself personally, I took on questions from, I believe it's Janvi and Sheikh. So again, apologies if I've said your name incorrectly. But if you could um, ask your questions on our WhatsApp, we will be able to get those answered for you. So I haven't been able to get a response in time whilst we've been live on air. And I really do not want to leave not having answered your questions. So please do either call us or WhatsApp us and we'll get those questions answered for you um, as soon as we can. One thing that I want to say, so I'm just really going to echo something that I mentioned at the start of the live stream. So for any of you students who are just joining us, um, so good morning. Hopefully it is going really well for you in terms of you've got the grades that you, uh, you lot anticipated. Um, but clearing is here as an additional opportunity. And it's something that I would really want to drum home to, to everyone that is, is watching this morning. So please do not see it as a negative connotation. Please do see it as a new opportunity for you lot to get the position that you wanted on the course that you know you're going to enjoy studying. So clearing is here. So we're here. Our phone lines are open. The numbers are going across the bottom of the screen for you. So for me, I'm more of a texter as opposed to a caller. So if I was in your position right now and I wanted a new um, offer and a different course, I'd probably be using the WhatsApp facility. But of course, you can always get in touch and speak to us on the phone. So if you are interested in a new course, if you didn't quite get the grades that you that you expected, um, please do give us a call on the numbers below. Have a look at the clearing course catalogue. Again, it's published in the comments for, for you lot to have a look at. So have a look at the different types of courses we have on offer. Have a look at the entry criteria. Have a look at the course itself. What does it entail? Does it suit your personal academic um, needs in terms of what you expect to study at university going forward? And if you have any questions, please do utilise the chats throughout the whole day. Please do utilise the WhatsApp. And also, like I said before, if you are in close proximity to Leicester, please do feel free to come onto our campus and have a little bit of a walk around because it really does aid in the decision making process. So I know some of you students haven't been able to get onto a university campus for, for a sustained period of time. And now that we're able to do that in a safe manner, I would really advise you lot to take advantage of this opportunity because it really will help you visualize what your next three years will look like if you see some of the facilities that we have on offer at DMU. Because sometimes, if I'm being completely honest and slightly biased, the photos just don't do it justice. So when you actually see it in person, it is truly remarkable. So that's the one thing that I would say to you guys. So if you do have any questions, please do feel free to pick up the phone or drop us a message on WhatsApp. Definitely. Thank you. Uh, yeah. And the details for those uh, contact details are still running along the bottom of the screen. Um, so just to finish off, I thought it might be nice if myself and Jordan shared a highlight or, you know, favourite memory of our time at DMU. Obviously, I've just finished, but Jordan is still studying. Um, so I'll just say that I think my highlight of DMU would definitely be being a part of the Demon FM Society. Um, so that's DMU student radio station. Myself and a friend hosted a student radio show every Friday. And not only was it a really good experience, but it was just so much fun. And societies really are a great way of making friends at uni. So even if you don't join Demon FM, there are plenty, I won't list through them all, there are plenty of societies at DMU, so do check them out online. Um, yeah, but what about you, Jordan? What would be your highlight? Again, mine is going to have to be society-based. I think it was um, I think it was going to be like last year when we were in the kayak society, just um, just having a lot of fun, just bashing about in the, um, in the river, playing like kayak water polo. 
we'd sometimes we go really far up to one of the weirs which is like this slant with like water pouring down it so we do a little bit of um launching ourselves off that and hoping we don't capsize it was always funny when someone you know fell in the river that kind of thing it's just a good a really good mess around a kind of like a polar opposite to kind of like you know rigid study that you just kind of were able to get out into the water and just have a lot of fun that sounds great uh Sal, I know you might not have a highlight, but you might have something that you just like to highlight about DMU. Yeah, so with me doing the, the job that I do, I speak to a lot of students on a day-to-day -day basis. And I know one of the concerns that a lot of students have had is in, around employability. With everything that's going on within the world, it's a natural concern for students to say, right, I'm going to go to university, I'm going to do this university degree, but will I get the right opportunities to fulfill my potential in regards to employability. And there's one thing that we're really proud of here at De Montford University, especially in regards to our careers team, because we have recently won the best careers team in the National Undergraduate Employability Awards. So what this reflects is the outstanding support we offer to our students in building their careers. So all our students are guaranteed work experience opportunities. Now, that is absolutely fundamental for any student who is thinking about their next steps, who are thinking about, right, what does my future entail? We are very proud of what we do here at De Montford University, especially in terms of employability. And it's something that is really embedded in the core of our university. And we want to make sure we're maximizing your opportunities in order for you guys to fulfill your employment potential. So please do not worry around employability. We've got you covered. Definitely. Again, a massive highlight of DMU. Um, so I would just like to remind everyone that we do also have a, another live stream today at 1.30, which will be a campus tour. So do look out for that. Um, our clearing contact details are still running along the bottom of the screen. So do call us today or message us on WhatsApp. Um, thank you again to Dal and Jordan for joining me today um, and answering everyone's questions. It's been really helpful and thank you to everyone for sending them in. Uh, again, congratulations to everyone getting their A-level results today. Um, no matter the result, we are here for you through DMU Clearing. So thank you very much. I hope you'll have a lovely day. Thank you. Bye.